when there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! Hey guys, Neil here from Neon Black Reviews. So tonight I'm back with another film from 1971 for you guys. I've got another giallo to talk about. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Uh, this was directed by Sergio Martino. And it stars George Hilton, uh, Edwidge Finnick, and Conchita Airoldi. Now I've seen this film several times now. And um, one of the things that I can tell you about it is uh, this is one of those films that's really kind of hard to tell somebody who hasn't seen it yet. Uh, what it's actually about without going too far into the plot and uh, giving away, uh, you know, some, some major spoilers. Um, but for you guys that haven't seen it, uh, don't worry, I'm not going to give anything, uh, you know, major uh, away in the way of spoilers. Uh, but I am going to try to tell you how this film gets going uh, and hopefully not get too far into the plot. So here we go. Uh, the film starts off with a murder. Um, we have a, a very giallo-esque killer. Uh, murdering this prostitute in his car with a straight razor. And we learn a little bit later on in the film that this is happening uh, in the city of Vienna. Uh, so yeah, they've got a, a, a straight razor wielding maniac on the loose in the city. Uh, so that's one of the things that is going on in this film uh, that's actually very important to the plot, as we'll see here uh, a little bit later. Um, but anyway, uh, right after the opening scene, we are introduced to two of our main characters, uh, Neil and Julie. I always find it interesting when one of the characters in the film has my name. Uh, so this is one of those films as well. Uh, but anyway, Neil is a, a diplomat uh, and Julie is his wife. Uh, they've been away in the, the United States and they are returning to Vienna. They're met at the airport uh, by these gentlemen that uh, quickly uh, drag Neil away on uh, official business. So uh, Julie is left to fend for herself getting back to their apartment. Um, and this is... Um, where she learns that there is a maniac on the loose. Uh, they get stopped at an ID checkpoint by the police and the officer, you know, tells them that a murder uh, just happened, uh, you know, about 30 minutes ago. And, you know, they're just kind of, you know, checking IDs, uh, trying to find this guy. So that's how she learns that there is a maniac on the loose. Uh, but when she gets back to her apartment, uh, she gets a, a delivery of flowers. And the flowers are from an ex-lover of hers named Jean. Uh, and through some flashbacks, uh, hallucinations, whatever you want to call them, uh, we get a little taste of their relationship. And that is uh, the reason why the film is called The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Uh, yeah, Julie has this uh, strange thing going on where she's both um, aroused and revolted by blood. And uh, her relationship with Jean is... Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a little extreme, I guess you could call it. Uh, he is a very dominant. Uh, most people would call this an abusive relationship, uh, but because of this strange vice that she has, uh, she uh, she tends to stay with him until. Um, and this is something we learn just a little later on. Uh, not a major spoiler or anything. Uh, that uh, she got out of the relationship by marrying Neil. Uh, so he, she basically married Neil to kind of put someone in between her and, and Jean. Uh, and then, of course, you know, they went away uh, to the United States for quite a while. So he was out of the picture. But now that she's back, he's trying to get back into her life. So that's another thing that is going on uh, in this film. Uh, then they're, uh, they're at a party uh, where uh, we are introduced to uh, two more of our, our main cast here. Uh, her best friend, Carol, um, and her cousin, uh, George, uh, who is played by Jer uh, George Hilton. Uh, Carol is played by Conchita Airoldi. Um, so their they're cousins uh, and their, their rich uncle just died and, and left them a lot of money. So, you know, they're pretty excited. Um, but anyway, uh, that's uh, one of the things that, uh, that is going on uh, that is also going to be important. Uh, but anyway, um, George um, and Julie uh, end up uh, having an affair. So uh, that's another thing that is going on in this film. Uh, and then um, Julie starts, or she gets a phone call uh, from somebody that says that uh, he knows what's going on between uh, her and George. And uh, if uh, she doesn't uh, give him a lot of money, uh, he's going to tell Neil. 
So that's as far as I'm going to go with the plot, but that kind of gets you introduced to everybody. We've got Neil and Julie, we've got George and Carol, and then we've got Gene. So we've got these five characters um, that are all in, intertwined in, uh, in various ways. And then, of course, we've got this, uh, this maniac on the loose uh, there in the city of Vienna. Um, so, uh, like I said, I've seen this film several times. And um, this is uh, Sergio Martino's first giallo. Um, Sergio Martino uh, directed five or six giallo films, uh, a few of which are, you know, up there. Uh, at the top of my list of my favorite giallos that I have seen so far, uh, let's see if I can name them. I mean, we've got The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, uh, The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, uh, Torso, which is one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I really like Torso. And we'll talk about that uh, in a couple of more years <laughs> as we get further into the 70s. Um, you got the suspicious death of a minor and you got all the colors of the dark. Am I forgetting one? Maybe I am. I think he directed six, but anyway, uh, that is uh, pretty much the uh, career of Sergio Martino in the world of Giallo. Um, but anyway, like I said, he's directed uh, several uh, films that I hold in high regard, uh, including Torso, which is one of my favorites. Uh, but I really do like uh, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Uh, first of all, uh, one of the reasons that I really like it is because it stars Edwidge Finnick. And she is absolutely beautiful in this film. I mean, she really is. She is a stunningly beautiful woman. Uh, but she is the main character, and I think she carries the film quite well. I mean, you know, she's not just a pretty face. I mean, uh, she is a sympathetic character. And, you know, in some ways, I mean, you definitely feel for what's going on. I mean, she's got some weird, you know, uh, vices, uh, as the title implies. And we later find out what they are. Um, but, uh, you know, you can kind of forgive all of that, you know, because she's pretty. Uh, but anyway, like I said, uh, she really does carry this film very well. Um, I think uh, she was... Uh, you know, a very a sympathetic main character uh, for all the things that are going on. Um, the this this film it has a lot of the things in it that I think a good giallo should have. Um, you know, we've got a, a giallo, the iconic you know look uh, for for the killer uh, that is running around in this city. Um, we've got a very twisty story, and that's one of the things that, you know, was kind of keeping me from really being able to to tell you really what's going on in the film, because I stopped right before a very important thing happened um, that really kind of makes everything start to, to gel together as far as what's going on, but I'm not going to give that away because that's a huge spoiler for anybody that hasn't seen it. Um, but it's a very twisty story. I mean, it's got... Um, I don't know how many twists there are, um, but yeah, it, it kind of, you know, starts moving in another direction and then it'll turn off in this direction. Uh, and it definitely keeps you guessing. Uh, and then when you get to the end of the film, that's where you realize, you know, just, you know, not just what was going on, um, but why it was so hard uh, to really, you know, pinpoint uh, you know, who the killer might be and what their motive might be, because, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of little different things that are in play in this story. Um, but it all does make sense. And, and that's the second thing uh, that I think that a, a good giallo uh, should have is not only should the story be, you know, a good story, um, you know, it should be, you know, twisty. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, overly complicated, uh, not that I mind that either, but I mean, it does have to make sense. And that's one of the things that I like about this film is that, you know, when it's all said and done and you go back, uh, maybe watch it again, you know, for the second time, um, you realize that, you know, all the pieces are there. Uh, so you do have a chance to figure this one out. Um, but it's uh, it's kind of a doozy of an ending as far as a Giallo films go. Um, but that's definitely one of the things that I like about it. So we got, you know, a good story. We got Edwidge Fennick. Um, It's got some good sequences in it. I mean, it's not a, a scary giallo. I mean, I don't know that it really falls too far into the realm of horror, uh, although IMDb does list this film as also a horror film. Um, it, def it definitely has some horror elements in it. Um, there's some very slasher-esque scenes in it. The kills are very slasher-esque. I mean, we got a straight razor, uh, things like that. Um, 
So, you know, it does feel, you know, at times, you know, like you're watching a slasher film, which, you know, a lot of Giallo films do. There's a, you know, a very, there's a lot of similarities between Gialli and slashers. Um, but, you know, the main thing that separates the two is that, you know, a Giallo film is a, a crime mystery at heart. And it can have other things, you know, thrown into the mix. Um, so this is one of those, um, you know, Gialli that that really does kind of feel like a slasher as well. So that's another reason that I like it. Um, but I mean, there's other things too. Um, I'd, I'd have to go into spoilers to give you all of the things that I like about this film. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but I do like the ending. The The ending is, uh, I don't know. It's uh, in, in some ways, I, I mean, I, I laugh with it um, at, at, at points um, because it, it is kind of a, a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, than uh, the rest of the film uh, as far as you know what's actually going on um, you know there's a pretty big reveal um, at the very end uh, but just the way that the film ends uh, it ends like a lot of you know giallo films do that I have seen especially the ones from Argento where you know it's like as soon it just as soon as uh, you know there's like uh, you know the resolution is in credits. I mean, there is no, oh, we'll see you later as they go back home and stuff like that. It's just like, boom, just leaves them right there. The end and the credits start rolling. Um, but the, the, you know, the scene that's right before that I did think was, uh, you know, kind of fitting and, and, and kind of humorous as well. Uh, but that's just me. Um, uh, another thing that, you know, does kind of stand out, um, especially with this one being from 1971, uh, is there is a lot of nudity in this film, um, but it's not one of those uh, giallo films that I would say goes as far as being sleazy, because there are some sleazy giallo films out there, and, and I like a good sleazy giallo, I'm not going to lie. Um, but there's a ton of nudity in this film, but like I said, it never really feels, um, you know, sleazy. Uh, it's gratuitous. I mean, it didn't have to be there and I'm not complaining that it is, um, you know, yeah, just, you know, certain scenes it's like, yeah, they could have had their clothes on and it would have been, you know, perfectly fine as far as the film is concerned. But, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'm not mad at them, especially since most of it is from Edwidge Finnick, which is, uh, you know, always a good thing, I think, because like I said, she's a beautiful woman. Um, but it does kind of, you know, push that envelope because again, this was 1971. I mean, you know, usually only see that kind of thing in like exploitation films and stuff, but, uh, but here we've got it, you know, in a, in a Giallo film. So it's one of the earlier Giallo to, to actually have uh, this much nudity in it. As far as I can remember anyway, like I said, I haven't seen them all, uh, but I've seen my fair share, but uh, that's another one. Another thing that kind of makes this one stand out. Um, but overall, I think this is just a really, really good film. Um, I mean, every time I watch it, um, you know, I usually kind of go enough time in between viewings uh, that I forget some of the finer points in it. And as I'm going through, I'm like, you know, I know how it ends, but I'm like, okay, well, this right here, there, there's like one, maybe two scenes um, where I'm not really sure that they make sense as far as, you know, knowing, you know, what, what's going to happen later. Um, but, um, maybe one day I'll do a deep dive into this film and, uh, and really kind of get into that. But I mean, it's nothing I can talk about in this review as far as, you know, what I think about it. Um, but like every time I watch it, you know, when it's over, I do kind of go back to a couple of scenes and I'm like, okay, I don't know that that really, makes a whole lot of sense as far as, you know, like being part of the plan because there's a plan going on in this film. Uh, it seemed like it was a little bit more luck, uh, than anything else. But, uh, but other than that, um, I think the story is, re is really pretty tight, uh, and is a first uh, effort, uh, into the world of Giallo from Sergio Martino. Uh, I think it's a, it's an excellent film. So if you haven't seen the strange vice of Mrs. Ward, definitely check it out. I don't know if it's streaming for free anywhere, um, IMDB says it's on AMC plus. So if you, uh, subscribe to AMC plus, uh, you can get to see it, uh, for f no extra money anyway. Uh, but anyway, like I said, uh, check it out. Uh, if you've already seen it, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about the film. I always like to hear what you guys have to say. And before you head out guys, if you would smash that thumbs up for me, uh, that like helps the video out here on YouTube. And I appreciate you doing that for me. 
And if you haven't already subscribed to Neon Black Reviews, then go ahead and do that as well. Just click that subscribe button down there, hit the bell next to it, and turn on those notifications. And that way you'll never miss a review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.